In this university quick tip, we will look at one of many methods for creating bottle screw caps. I have searched the web for all sorts of solutions and I found that this particular one doesn't really exist, so I am proudly claiming it. So let's stop this uh, annoying animation and let's create a new document and begin. It all begins with a helix spline. We need to set it to be on the XZ plane. And what I'm going to do is make a copy of this. So press Command or Control and drag this down. And I'm going to make it minus 100 so that it aligns with the bottom of the top helix. I'm just going to put it on the bottom just for good measure. We don't need to do that. And I'm going to put a loft generator, which I'm going to use to mesh these two splines. I'm going to change my Garaw shading to lines so we can see the lines and see the mess of an object we've made. So select the loft. Number one, get rid of subdivision per segment. Number two, make the mesh subdivision the least amount, which is not zero, but two, but I put zero there, so it will revert to the smallest amount. And then I can turn on organic form, or I can put a number here or do both, a number that is a multiple of two plus one. And the number I want at this point is that because I want 60 subdivisions per rotation, and we have two full rotations here. I'm going to make this 120 subdivisions plus one for reasons you'll find out in the dedicated tutorial I made about the loft generator. And uh, this is all I need to begin with. So select the generator, press C to make it editable. I'm going to go to points mode, select all, right click and optimize. And now I'm going to go to model mode and press command and drag this to make a copy. Now, I know this needs to be at 200. I'm going to select both objects, right click and connect objects and delete. And now I'm going to select all points again, right click and optimize. Now, let me show you a quick troubleshooting method. Some of these points haven't been welded. If I right click and say bevel in points mode, you will see that although most of these points become nice little rhomboids, some of them have this line in the middle. And this is an indication that we have extra points we don't need. So undo, right click, set the optimize to the gear and set the tolerance to one. Press OK. And now if I use the bevel, you'll see that everything is fine. And that's fantastic. So now let's go and do something else. I'm going to go to edge mode and I'm going to use my move tool to click on this one. And I want to select a one and a half rotation. So this is one rotation. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to press command and shift to create the full loop. And then I'm going to go and remove some of these until I get to the half. Now you can do this in many different ways. You can go to your orthographic views and see how many you need to remove command to delete another two. I think we're good over there, but I'm not too fussy about it. So we've selected one and a half spirals of edge. And uh, what I need to do now is go and delete everything I don't need. Before I do that, I'm going to set this edge selection to spiral edges. So now I have this edge selection fixed. Fantastic. And the next thing I want to do is make sure I delete all the polygons I don't need. So what I'm going to do is with my move tool selected, I'm going to select the edge, which is one, two over and one under. So I'm going to select this edge and then command shift click on this edge. And this is going to select all the edges I don't need. Press delete to delete them. Let's double click here and you can see that now we have exactly what we need. It begins just one polygon in and it ends just one polygon before the end. Great. Let me select point mode and you can see we don't have any redundant points or anything like that. So what is our next move? Well, double click here and we can create our groove, but it's not really time to do that quite yet because now I want to create the top and bottom parts. And how do I do that? Well, I'm going to right click and use my bridge tool to bridge these two over 
and then go to the other side and bridge these two over. I'm going to change my view to hidden line so I can see things a bit better. And the next thing I need to do is go to my select, go to my loop selection and select the top loop. And what I want to do is set this to zero so everything is in the same position. And I'm going to put this at 250. Fantastic. And then I'm going to do pretty much the opposite right at the bottom. I'm going to select my loop selection, select this loop, and I'm going to go and say zero and put this at minus 100. So this is what we have at this point. If I double click here now, what I can do to actually create the groove is just right click and bevel. Click and drag and you can see we're creating this nice little slope. But here's the problem now. If I want to make this smaller and I go select model tool and make it smaller, the groove becomes smaller as well. So let me undo a few times. And what I'm going to do is when we are at the point where we want to create the groove, I'm actually going to make this the proper size I want it to. Now I measured this and it was three centimeters in diameter and about a centimeter high. I'm going to do it times 10. So 30 and 30. And I want this to be one. And then I'm going to set this to zero. And I said one, whereas I meant 10. Press H to zoom everything. And this is the correct size now. And now that it's the correct size, I can actually go and make my groove. So right click and bevel as thick as I need it to be. Fantastic. Now, when you release your mouse button from the bevel, you get all the edges selected. This allows us to press command and click on the polygon mode and it will create a polygon selection, which if I deselect this by pressing command and click, I can go and set that selection to polys. Fantastic. And then press D to do a poly extrude. Extrude this. And now if I create a subdivision surface and drag this underneath, I have this really nice spiral. Now, how you go from here, it's up to you. What I'm going to do is show you very quickly, edge mode, UL to go to loop mode, select this, press E to move, command, click to drag, T, let's make it a bit smaller, then command, drag to make a copy. I'm gonna press E to just raise it slightly, and then press T for scale, command to make a copy. Now that I've made that copy, I'm going to go over here and say 0 and 0. And if I want to, I can actually go and select all the points right there in the middle. I'm going to do this using the rectangle selection, or I can always just select everything, right click and optimize. Now you see that the model has been destroyed. Undo. That is because you need to go to the optimize gear icon and make sure this is back to sensible values. 0 0.01 and now we've welded the top as well. Sometimes it's helpful if you take all these triangles and you do a melt. So U, Z to melt them. And let me click outside and render and you will see we have a nice smooth object. From this point onwards, you can do whatever you want with your polygonal modeling. You can subdivide things providing, and that's an important thing. So look at this little kink here. It creates a little kink. That is basically my mistake. I'm going to do a loop cut, KL, because you need to make sure that when polygons start bending when you're using subdivision surfaces, so the this one bends over to this one, that no triangle or n-gon is involved. In this case, we don't have an artifact anymore because I added an extra little polygon there. But that's a subject for another tutorial. So let's go underneath, go to edge mode, UL to get the loop. Go here, press E. Now I'm going to press Command and make a copy. Now all these are quads, and now I can do whatever I want with them. So press Command and move it again to make a copy. Press T to scale it. Press Command and T to make it grow. Press E, pull it up a bit. Press Command and move it. And then press T, Command to make a copy. 
and one more copy with command and bring this down and we have this nice little screw cap lastly many people would say yes but this needs to be thinner and so forth well it's not such a difficult task at this point for you to go and do certain changes so let me give you a few cues use your live selection tool to select these polygons here and what you could do is go to your sculpting and grab a smoothing brush and you can smooth these now I'm going to undo just make sure that your pressure is quite low so that you can go slowly so if you do this you will see that you can taper it manually and don't forget that these are going to be quite small in your render and won't be extremely visible so there you go you can go here and make it even smaller and it's only smoothing out the selected polygons there you go and let's go and do the same right on the other side so you don't complain that I didn't show you so let's select all these let's go back sculpt let's get our smoothing brush and let's go here and smooth everything out I'm using a mouse if I use a tablet it's going to be a bit smoother render and you can see that you can just smooth it out as much as you need so this is my way of creating bottle screw caps I hope you enjoyed it any questions you have um, well forget about them <laughs>